So chapter 7.1, rule number two is for compounds with prefixes. So this is similar to the binary rule, except now you're going to add prefixes. And I will tell you that this rule is not used very often. So when you start to do your worksheets and so forth, you should not be going prefix crazy and using prefixes with everything. So the reason we have to use prefixes goes back to the law of multiple proportions. Some elements can combine in greater than one way. We have to name them appropriately then because CO is a different compound than CO2. It contains the same elements, but in different quantities. So the rule is very similar to that of the binary rule. You basically say the name of the first element, and then you say the name of the second element with the suffix IDE, except now you may have to add a prefix before each element name. So you're still dealing with two elements, but now you are going to have to look at the subscript because you have to know how many there are in order to add the appropriate prefix in. So here's a list of prefixes. So you need to copy this into your notes and you need to know prefixes one through 10. Now the higher ones are not used as commonly, but you still may see them and need to know them. So prefix one is mono, two in science, in this case we use di, not bi, di, three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, six is hexa, seven is hepta, eight is octa, nine is nana, and 10 is deca. So there are some slight cautions I can warn you about. The second element, no matter what it is, what the subscript is, it always gets a prefix. So the second element always gets one of these, whichever it is based on the subscript. The first element gets a prefix unless it's mono. So prefix for subscript two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 for the first element, but we don't use mono on the first element. It's just not as proper. Okay, the other thing you need to know is when do I use prefixes? Because I told you not to go prefix crazy. So you're only gonna use a prefix with these special combinations. So I would also write these on the back of your periodic table. So if you see oxygen with carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, or silicon, you have to use a prefix. It doesn't matter which of these comes first, it's just one of these combinations, oxygen plus one of these, use a prefix. Doesn't matter the order, carbon and then oxygen, oxygen and then carbon. And usually oxygen comes second. Okay, if you see phosphorus with chlorine, bromine, nitrogen, or oxygen, duplicated here, you have to use a prefix. Phosphorus plus one of these four, the matter of the order, must use a prefix. If you see sulfur with carbon or fluorine or antimony or oxygen, you must use a prefix, but that's it. So really there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, because I duplicated 12 times where you're gonna use a prefix. Just because you see a subscript does not mean you add a prefix. Only one of these combinations. And I do not expect you to memorize these. That's why you should write them down. So let's now look at some examples. Okay, so I have capital C, capital O. So I still have two elements, but if I go back to my chart, I've got carbon plus oxygen, use a prefix. So that's how I know to use a prefix. I'm actually looking at my chart. So now the question is, how many are the carbons are there? Well, there's one, because if there's no subscript, it's assumed it's a one. How many oxygens are there? Also one. We never say mono on the first element, but the second element always gets a prefix. So this is gonna be carbon monoxide. And notice I didn't double up my O's, monoxide. I'm not particular about that, okay? So I said the name of the first element, carbon. 
And then we have oxygen, which became oxide. And then I used my subscripts for my prefixes. Carbon does not get mono because it's the first element. The first element never gets mono. The second element always gets a prefix. So carbon monoxide. Here's an example of why we have to use prefixes. Now we have CO2. It contains the exact same elements. So if we were naming this binary, which is wrong, but if we were, CO would be carbon oxide. CO2 would be carbon oxide. You wouldn't know the difference. Okay, so that's why we have these prefixes. So once again, carbon and oxygen are one of those special combinations. There's one carbon, there's two oxygens. I have to cut oxygen and make it oxide. So this is gonna be carbon, and then how many oxygen? Two, so it's carbon dioxide. One carbon, two oxygen. Compared to the first example, one carbon, one oxygen. All right, try this one, capital N, capital O. So figure out the element names, how you're going to write them, and then the subscript, and then the corresponding prefix. So I have N, nitrogen, O, oxygen, there's one nitrogen, there's one oxygen. I never put mono one on the first element, so it's just nitrogen and then monoxide. Oxygen became oxide, and I have to put a prefix on the second element, no matter what that prefix is. Okay, try this one. N2O. Once again, figure out the name of the elements, how you're going to cut them, and then the subscript number with the corresponding prefix. This one's gonna be dinitrogen monoxide. Two nitrogens, dinitrogen, one oxygen, monoxide. Okay, let's try some more. P4O10, figure out the elements, the subscripts, the prefix. This is going to be tetraphosphorus, four phosphorus, deca oxide, or some people may put deca oxide, whichever. N2O5, two nitrogen, five oxygen. I cut oxygen to oxide. This is dinitrogen, pentaoxide, or pentoxide, whichever. CS2, C is carbon. S is sulfur, sulfur becomes sulfide. I have one carbon, two sulfur, so this will be carbon disulfide. We do not use mono on the first element. Okay, one more, SF6. So sulfur and fluorine, one sulfur, six fluorine. Fluorine will become fluoride. So we have sulfur, hexa for six, fluoride. Okay, so once again, the prefix rule as far as the actual element names is similar to binary. Say the name of the first element, say the name of the second element with IDE, and then you have to look at the prefix with the corresponding subscript. So in this case, you do have to look at the subscripts. The second element always gets a subscript or a prefix, I'm sorry, one through 10. The first element gets a prefix unless it's one mono. And once again, do not go prefix crazy. Make sure you're looking at those small special combinations.